your guide to the truth. The new American media dot com. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth. North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles to be specific. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Agree to Disagree here on the TNAM Radio Network. My name is Brian Engelman and I'm coming to you as I have for the past five and one half years. And I thank each and every one of you for linking up with us in all of the various channels that we use to communicate with you. No, we don't always do radio shows. No, we don't always do video exposés. No, we don't always go on location. We don't always stay on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. But I'll tell you what, we're in all of those places sometimes. So here's how you stay in touch with us. TheNewAmericanMedia.com is the hub. On the right side of that page, you click play to listen to this show live. Underneath that is our Twitter and our Facebook feed. Link up with us. On Twitter, we're at American underscore media underscore. On Facebook, just do a search for The New American Media. You can search out because the old American media has failed us. They've failed themselves. They've failed their audience. They have failed to live up to the expectations of the intention of what the press is supposed to be in the first place. That is what is historic about this election. But that's why you're going to follow us, The New American Media. Definitely click subscribe, youtube.com slash The New American Media. Today is a very interesting day. I've been waiting for a couple of days to process what just happened here in 2016. And um, much like how I waited a few days with the missing Malaysian airliner, um, I did the same thing with Mr. John B. Wells then, and I'm going to do it with uh, Mr. John B. Wells today on the program. John, welcome to the show. Great to be with you, Brian. Heck of a week, hasn't it been? My Lord, the range of emotions. And I, w I was saying this off air that I think Cleveland has become some sort of energy vortex. Something has opened in Cleveland. <laughs> I have never. An energy vortex? Did you say vortex? Yes, I did. The Cleveland Cavaliers win the first ever championship. The RNC comes into Cleveland in the same arena. The Cleveland Indians are in the World Series. Donald Trump upsets uh, someone who was as formidable as the Golden State Warriors with their regular season wins record this year. Uh, the Cavs came with an upset, and Donald Trump just upset Hillary Clinton. It's been pretty astonishing. Um, I, did, did you think that this was going to happen, or, or did you allow, was did doubt creep in and say, I, I, I don't see it working out this way? You know, I can answer that one of two ways, and uh, the one way is somewhat diplomatically, and the other is to just to just uh, let, let, let just let you have it. You know what I mean? Right. All right. What do you um, prefer, diplomatic, or what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna choose where I get both. So give me give me the uh, give me the version as if Trump's assistant is tweeting with him, and then the secondly, give me if Trump had the Twitter in his in his fingertips. Well, I gotta tell you, I uh, I stated on uh, Caravan to Midnight, and also on Arc Midnight, which is the terrestrial uh, adjunct to our um, cyber delivered TV show last uh, Saturday night, and. I think that's probably the Saturday night before that. Uh, it's just two hours, 10 to midnight on a radio station KLIF out of Dallas. It streams all over the place. iHeart picks it up and everything. So I just went with, you know, here's the thing. It goes without saying, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I say Donald Trump in a landslide. That's what I called all year. I, I've, I've been saying it. I, are, were you surprised it was as close as it was? And maybe the, the the popular vote didn't even quite get there, let alone electoral. Well, I heard the usual. I heard everything that the usual fear, uh, fear porn mongers were uh, were saying, and they're almost always wrong. And so, and then uh, we heard from uh, Bev Harris uh, how whether she wins or loses, she wins, and that didn't happen. So, frankly, everybody who was so cocksure about this stuff. Uh, from the mainstream media to members of the alternative media, they were all wrong. The only thing that was predictable was the um, the children, the still on the teat children. Oh yes. Uh, whose character suggests that uh, they stand around when they're not, you know, breaking other people's properties, uh, property, and acting like idiots. They stand right around waiting for their mothers to give them their bath, and that would be that bunch in Portland. 
Now, what makes it worse is that mainstream media has given these, uh, these people, 4,000 people, that's a pretty good-sized crowd. And they, they, uh, they hasten to add that, well, not everybody was rioting. It was just a few people. You know, well, they sure had a bunch of riot cops jacked up. So, well, and John, let, let's ima- let's media. imagine some of these uh, these um, some of the groups from the Tea Party back in you know 2008, 2010. If you could remember back, let's imagine if there were just 400 people in the Tea Party lighting things on fire and breaking windows and chanting things and making threats. You think that well, you know that, that would have played right? a little they, they different? They would absolutely crucify them in the press and everywhere else that they could. But here's the thing. The systems have now been broken. I mean, I think that I can say this about you as well as myself, okay? We are systems busters. If the system is a good system, we'll find out. If the system is not a good system, we'll find that out too. And to see the mainstream media giving these... uh, these are your deplorables. To, to use their, their own matriarch's phrase, this is your basket of deplorables. Exactly. But at the same time, why is mainstream media covering this? Why do they not say a crowd of about 4,000 people you know, took to the streets in Portland to uh, express their concerns over Donald Trump? There was some vandalism. Police have got it under control and move on. You know, why give these morons their 15 seconds of fame? Why even acknowledge them? Well, in my opinion, it's because, look, either we think that the mainstream media is bought and paid for, or we don't think that. So if we do, then we have to say, hmm, is it just a slow news day? Did anybody think this through? Did anybody think, oh, that's right. You're thinking that, for example, Fox News, none of the people who would be out riding in the streets would be watching Fox News, and they're probably right. So there is the possibility of some legitimacy in their decision to give this stuff as much coverage as possible. It's also a possibility that they're just trying to illustrate the complete stupidity of the left. We won. They lost. That's it. Well, we want to change everything because, because we didn't get our way. Well, that's too bad. And then these idiots out there, like this, this Latina, people are going to have to die and all this stuff. It's like... Don't break up my family. It's like, we didn't break up your family. You did. Well, it's real bad in Mexico. Well, that's not our problem. It's your problem. See, these people have the idea that their philosophy needs to be, I need, therefore you owe me, because I graced the planet by my birth. They're just, they're just little titty babies. That's a Texas Texas expression. (laughs) That's what they are. Uh, They're pathetic, but they're dangerous. And then, uh, and look at every liberal city. Look at every full de Blasio is threatening to delete the entire database of, I don't know, something like 800,000 illegals. He's threatening to delete the database. That should be illegal. Wow. I mean, these people are, look... I'm not going to say that all Democrats are low life. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to be I'm going to be excessively fair and say 90 percent because they don't think rationally. They attempt to think emotionally and it doesn't work. So and I think largely they're heartless. They're only interested in the moment. They're their little moment of expression. So the Democratic Party used to be the party of the working man. Look out for workers' rights. Make sure that everybody was treated fairly. And the Republicans were, let's make sure nobody gets left out. But now the Democrat Party has turned into the the party of the needy, the intolerant. And if anyone will bother to notice, Brian, they're the damn racists. Remember all that stuff when, uh, when Barack Obama took office? Uh, I can't even remember who that black woman was that was saying that political enemies, anybody that opposed them would be punished. Well, punished? Obama, Obama said that too. He was the mm-hmm. ringleader of all this. And, and here's what I said, John. The, the, anyway, no, finish your point. Go ahead. Yeah, I remember that. No, I have. Carry on. No, I, you know, my whole thing is I didn't vote for Barack Obama either time. 
I, I, I looked at where he came from in Chicago. I looked at Bernadine Dorn. I looked at William Ayers. I looked at Rules for Radicals. I looked at communism, Marxism. I studied this crap, and I wasn't interested in what he was selling. Now, when he got elected, I did say some prayers. I, I am a person that will um, convene and have conversations with a, a larger force, a higher being, a spiritual realm, whatever you want to call some sort of spirituality. I prayed that he stayed safe, that he didn't come into harm's way, you know, and I also prayed for our country. And I said, I didn't vote for this guy, but hey, maybe he can surprise me and do a lot of good stuff. I'm saying the same thing about Donald Trump today. He is the, he is the pilot of the airplane that I'm currently on. If he, if he really messes this up, I, I think I'm going to feel it sitting in the back of the airplane. So right now is an opportunity, and I'm very curious to see how it plays out. Well, I am too, but I think that you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I don't – look, um, somebody gave me a book back in – it must have been like 1988 or nine, maybe 90, maybe. And it was Donald Trump's book, The Art of the Deal. And, and it was – a pretty well written book, and I enjoyed it. Same and I here. learned something very important, which should be obvious. Should be obvious. It's not always possible to do this, but it is. Whenever he he commissioned anybody to do a job, whether it was a legal job or a tax job, a construction job, a material sourcing job, a management job, no matter who he needed, he picked. In his words. I got so-and-so, so-and-so, the best in the business at such-and-such. He picks the best people. I mean, seriously, anybody that can start off with a million or a two million dollars, that's nothing. I mean, there are houses in Highland Park over here that are two million, and they're not that big. Right. Anybody who starts off with two million real American dollars, because when he got that money, that would have been probably, I don't know, the 70s or, or maybe early 80s, you know? I, I will say that that million back then is more like 10 or 20 if you adjust it for inflation. Well, you know, I did a, it's funny. I calculated that just for the, for the heck of it. I, I picked $1,200 today would be worth what in the year 2000? <laughs> and it would have been worth 1685 or something like that. Uh, I, they've got a program. You can look it up on the net. Right. So basically every... Let's see. Uh, it, well, it was from from 1988 to 2016. It is uh, double. You know, if you were pulling six hundred eighty thousand dollars in 1988, right? That's that's like one point. Hey, hey you know 1. what? Point six. John, I saw, I saw a meme in it, and it said um, it was Ron Paul answering the phone, and it said, "Hello, Ple President Elect Trump. Why, yes, I would be willing to serve as Federal Reserve Chairman. Thank you for the offer." Now, we talk about declining value of money and inflation, John. I mean, are we – is President Trump going to actually figure out what's messing up our, our money system? Do you have what, – what's you your bet, thought? You man, because my whole point, Brian, was that I don't give a damn. If you take $2 million and turn it into a billion, a billion is a thousand millions. That's a lot. So, and he has more than – he has more than 1,000 millions. He's got a couple of billion. You know, he's got two, three thousand millions. So that tells me that the guy's got something going, and he does. I mean, there is no businessman. Look, if every deal that he had done had gone just according to clockwork, everybody knows. I mean, there's a, a family down here that uh, was of some prominence for a while, the Crows. They built Embarcadero Center in, uh, in uh, San Francisco. They, they both built a bunch of stuff. I mean, it was a multi, multi, multi-million dollar business. And, uh, but it's the same thing. You set up a separate corporation. Anybody with a brain in their head who knows right. anything about business sets up a separate corporation for every project that you set up. You don't just do it all under, you know, John and Brian Incorporated. No, 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 no. If we're going to build a hotel over there, we're going to set up, uh, you know. Trump Vegas e Enterprise. E and w, uh, e and w Skyscrapers, Inc. Yeah, I like this. That's e and it. W Skyscrapers, Inc. What city are we going to go to first, John? Oh, you pick it, man. You pick. <laughs> 
I think we ought to go to Portland and straighten that bunch out. Man, you know, it was interesting. I did hear they raised twenty five thousand dollars and apologized and said this was about twenty idiots that we we kept telling to stop doing what they were doing. They were just out here committing crimes, and we're going to try to help rebuild it. I did hear that on the news today, at least. Well, you know, that's good. That's that it, what I mean. They need to disassociate. Are going the wrong way. Yeah. That's the ten percent that stepped up. That's the ten percent that stepped up and said, "Look, these people just lost their stuff. They're just stupid. You know, we're we're going to come up with the dough and see if we can undo some of this. You know, we were part of it too. That's actually taking responsibility. But but what about the responsibility of the country? What sense does it make that Granny has to be searched all over? She has to go into a body scanner where people can see the details of her seventy-eight or eighty-year-old body." Because Granny's a terror threat, but you leave your whole southern border open. Well, that just makes all kinds of sense to me. No. I, you know, being in Ohio on September 11th, I was so shocked and surprised to understand just how wide open our southern border has been since 2001 for the th- several decades leading up to 2001 up until today you're telling me you have to study all the metadata in all of the logs with all of the websites i visit the people i talk to the people in their contacts list you're going to surveil me but you're going to leave the back door wide open i don't believe that you're doing this for my benefit if you're going to leave the back door open and hold me at gunpoint over in the living room yeah i kind of have a problem and i'm going to get a little suspicious after a while that your intentions are what you say they are and that's what the government's been doing to us since september 11th john you know brian i'm gonna this would this uh, this could be construed to be a shameless plug but i'm going to do it anyway Over the course of over 630, I think we're in the 640s now, the number of programs that we've produced and and have an archive. Over the course of these, you know, pushing, it'll be in February, it'll be three solid years that we've been doing this. Wow. Uh, Time goes by fast (laughs) when you're you're having a good time. We have been been talking for years. That is crazy. Five years? Something like that. Yeah. It just it just went it just went flying by. The years have just flown by. The weeks fly by. Right. You know, I can't believe we're, we're it's Friday today and and we're going to do the radio show tomorrow night between uh, ten and midnight central. <clears throat> okay. On KLIF. The thing, what I've learned is none of this stuff is by accident, bro. Right. None of it. You know the the uh, the twin towers coming down. Oh yeah, building seven came down too. Inside job. The Kennedy assassination. Inside job. The Gulf of Tonkin incident that never happened got us into Vietnam for 11 years, went into 64, finally we're completely out of there in 75. That was an inside setup. World War II and Pearl Harbor was an inside job. FDR knew damned well what was going to happen and where it was going to happen and made sure that those carriers were not in port. I've got letters that my father wrote who was at Pearl Harbor on the USS Maryland talking about the schedule of ships going in and out. They go out for a couple of weeks, they come back for a couple of weeks. They go out for two weeks, they come back for two weeks, you know. Over and over and over again, they timed it perfectly so those carriers were not in, in, in uh, they weren't more, moored at, poor, at Pearl, they were at, at sea. World War I was a setup. The Germans were trying to place ads in the newspapers going, in American newspapers going, don't book passage on, on these certain ships that go to these certain destinations. Just don't do it. There's a huge risk. Newspapers here wouldn't run them because America was going, we're not going to get involved. We're not getting involved in that. Oh, but they had to have America get into it. So they, they made up a BS story about the Lusitania. Oh, it was a bunch of innocent passengers. That boat was loaded with all kinds of munitions, and everybody knows it. Then what happened? Then they bring every Nazi scientist, even the, even the floor managers of warehouses and factories, they were expert businessmen, brought all of them over here that they could, brought Von Braun over, they brought Willy Messerschmitt over, Kurt Tank went to Argentina and uh, wound up building the aircraft that eventually evolved into the MiG, and that F-86 Sabre jet that we flew over Korea, and probably a few of them even into Vietnam, um, that's Willie Messerschmitt's design. The Bell X-5 is Willie Messerschmitt's design. They brought Mengele over here. We know now that Mengele was involved with Mary Sherman, who was doing the weaponizing of the cancer virus in New Orleans. We now know that, that uh, David Ferry and, uh, and the Clay Shaw, Lee Harvey Oswald, 
Judith Very Baker, his girlfriend for six months, while he was still married to Marina, by the way, and Mary Sherman. All these people lived in the same neighborhood. David Ferry was a CIA pilot. Clay Shaw was a CIA asset. Jim Garrison proved that Lee Harvey Oswald didn't do it. I spoke with Judith Baker, and I said, I'm going to speak to you real straight ahead. I'm not going to pussyfoot around. No kid gloves. I'm just going to talk to you like we've known each other forever, and you just answer the questions that you want to. And if you don't want to answer a question, just say, I don't want to answer it. She goes, I would prefer it that way. I said, okay, here we go. Lee Harvey Oswald, CIA officer, yes or no? Yes was her answer. I said, no FBI. She said, them too. He got a check for $200 from the FBI every week and a check for $200 from CIA every week. And Judith was a researcher. She saved everything, every scrap of paper, every check stub, every notebook, everything, every letter. And there it is for everybody to see. So nothing happens that is not planned. People don't just decide, hey, we're North Koreans and, and, and we're pissed off at America, so, so we're going to threaten them with an EMP strike and nukes and, and everything else. What, so China couldn't make a phone call and say, you better, you better knock it off or we're going to have to come in there and sell you down. China's doing it. But it's just to keep the agitation going. That's why Vlad Putin was so worried that if Hillary got in there, that we were going to wind up in a war, and we most certainly would have. They'd have put a, 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 a no-fly zone over Syria. Sooner or later, there would have been fire exchange between a Russian jet and one of ours. It'd be game on, because Vlad Putin's not going to put up with much of that. John, those were happening. From Obama, whom he despises mm-hmm. with good reason. Go ahead. Well, well those are th- th- that's been happening over the past six months with more and more frequency. Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> two, two, uh, two fighter pilots, uh, two fighter jets narrowly avoided each other today in a practice drill when a Russian and an American... I'd heard that story so many times over the past year. You could tell this was getting ratcheted up. Um, yeah, and then some of these BS uh, websites come up with, look, look, F-18 Hornet in Russian colors. Well, number one, there's nothing unusual about that. Number two, it says Marines on the side of the plane. And number three, it looks photoshopped. <laughs> there are a bunch of conspiracy theory mongers and fear pornsters out there. We need to watch out for them. So that's the thing. This is what I say on Caravan to Midnight. Who watches the watchers? We do. Who watches us? You do. You catch us screwing up, you take it to social media, you rat us out if you catch us pulling any BS. Just do it. You'll be doing us a favor. Okay? Because we don't have any integrity. We don't have anything. We have nothing to bring to the party without integrity. It doesn't matter. We can have all of the so-called intel in the world. If you don't have integrity, nobody going to listen to you. So that's it. And uh, some of these people in the alternative media need to calm down. Well, let me, you know, you're going to have to figure out some other way to get YouTube clicks. <laughs> yeah. I, the, the only currency that's worth a damn in this industry is your continued pursuit of truth. You can mess up if you fess up. If you, you know, you can mess up if you fess up. That's fine. And like you said, who watches the watchers? You watch us. Tell us if we're, if we're getting off track with something. Tell us we're going off the deep end and we're just kind of, we're missing something. That's the point. And I think, you know, I, I saw this summed up. Are you familiar with this guy, Jonathan Pye, by chance? Have you caught this clip making the rounds? Um, at this moment, yes, yes and no. I, I've, I seem to have a remnant of the memory of the name. But it's let me, kind of getting late where I am, so maybe I just forgot it for a minute. Let me, let me, that's <laughs> fine. Let me just press play because I watched this multiple times today. And this is a guy talking about what happened and how Trump got here. I think it's so spot on. I'm just going to play a little bit and get your thoughts on it. The conditions okay. in which Donald Trump and people like him can thrive. But instead of persuading people to vote, she just she just courted celebrity endorsements and then lost. What's going on? It's almost as if the political acumen of Beyonce and Jay-Z count for nothing. And then she loses it and, and loses the election and she locks herself in her hotel because she's too upset. Or because it had never occurred to them to even write a concession speech. Either way, grow up. I have no sympathy for her whatsoever. Be a better candidate. But <laughs> and this thing goes on. It, it, it's just, it's actually fascinating. It's, it's the left talking to the left and saying, you know what's funny? If you're going to sit here and call people deplorable and racist and bigots and, and it, everything under the book, 
guess what? Do you re are you really surprised that these people did not turn around and vote for your candidate? And he's tearing into Hillary for every way, it, how just monstrous this person is, and how lousy of a candidate, and even saying you, the DNC got what they wanted. You know, they... <sighs> It's almost as if Donald Trump was hand-selected by Hillary to be the perfect, defeatable candidate, and she still couldn't even do that. I, I mean, are you surprised it was this close, though? I, I, we, we had the, the, the pleasant way to say it and then the blunt way to say it. Maybe they turned into the same thing. Well, there wasn't any. There, I think it would have been worse if there hadn't been any uh, voter fraud, and there was. It was widespread. Everybody knows it. Yeah. From the notice that none of those machines flipped a Hillary vote to a Trump vote. Anytime it was reported, it was always Trump got flipped to Hillary. So, yeah, number one, I don't think she won the popular vote. Number two, we know George Soros owns, I don't know, 16 um, outlets for those voting machines that somebody of his makes. We know that George Soros is a notorious, he's, he's a Jew who helped other Jews uh, onto the trucks uh, along with their belongings into other trucks. said 1945 was the best year of his life. This guy is a monstrous individual. George Soros would not have put all that dough behind there if he didn't think that, that they could pull this off. Because these leftists, these ones that are called the globalists, they are consumed with hubris. And they have told so many lies that they can't remember what they told people. That's Hillary Clinton's problem. She was the one complaining about the border. She was, oh, you go, oh, well, it's just a campaign, you know. Everybody's going to talk stuff about the other candidates when, when they're in a campaign. Like, yeah, well, she was pretty vitriolic toward Obama. It was rumored forever that they hated each other. And, uh, but she's a Democrat, so she's going to run again because she didn't make it in 08. So these people think that they're way smarter than they are. I wonder why we decide to turn over ICANN to some international consortium of the nonprofit variety. Yeah, right. I mean, these people were dismantling everything that we know to be free access to information. They don't want us to have free access to information. We might, we might learn something. Then what? So. So if the, if if the the access to the free access to information. Um, Yes, changing to ICANN, doing a whole bunch of uh, censorship. We see what's happening to, to real journalists. We see what's happening to WikiLeaks. We see what's happening to Edward Snowden. Um, you know, the, these truth tellers are being vilified, and that was one of my biggest problems with Trump this whole election was that, you know, he had made allusions to hanging uh, Snowden for treason, to shooting him for treason. Um, you know, and, and these are people exposing government corruption. Uh, you know, I, I'm a little concerned that you love it when it's taking Hillary down, but if it's uh, against you, now you're going to go after him. And I think we're starting to enter that slippery slope kind of phase here where we really have to kind of keep a close eye on how much power and how much influence we really want these elected officials to, to have. The, the, the people that supported Barack Obama wanted him to have control and access over everything and the ultimate infinite power. Okay, and then hand the keys over to Trump. Do you really want that person driving to have all of that access and all of that, um, a, a carte blanche, if you will, to go in any direction they so choose? Um, you know, I think this is a, a moment where America is going to have to pause for a second and figure out what do we expect out of this position, John? I mean, do, do you see Donald Trump as – are you are you concerned that he might be viewed in the lines of a JFK, meaning Mike Pence might get a little bit more action if there's a freak injury? I don't think Mike Pence is that kind of guy. I don't, I don't see any indicator, any symptom in Mike Pence's countenance that suggests that he's a – He'd be willing to like, you know, are you are you saying bump Trump off so he could move up? I don't think so. Well, um, because, th th uh, there's two ways to do it. I think LBJ, what what was going on there? There's there's a lot of people that have done a lot of research saying that he was actually maybe a participant involved or maybe an orchestrator. Well, he was most definitely a participant. But what most people don't know is that, J, uh, that uh, LBJ, Lyndon Johnson, was on his his way to jail. He had already been implicated in massive right. fraud with a guy called Billy Saul Estes, who was a, he used to sell these grain silos that didn't exist. <laughs> I mean, Lyndon Johnson rigged elections and did all kinds of crazy stuff. This, Lyndon Johnson was a criminal, 
every bit the criminal. He had this guy named Mac, uh, oh, God, what was his last name? Uh, I'll think of it. Uh, his highly intelligent man, ruthless, cold-blooded Mac Wallace. This guy was one serious cat. He smoked this dude that was a political enemy of Lyndon Johnson's, shot the, the SOB five times, and got five years probation for it. Wow. You talk about a connected guy. Back in those days, Texas was really kind of cowboy country. It really was. I mean, I was just a child when all this stuff was going on, but, but you know, I wasn't a dumbass. I, 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 could, I could read. I was reading on a 12th grade level when I was in the first grade, they say. So the first thing... I had a thought occur to me when I was in the first grade, which was, as I was we reading the weekly reader, which had actually some adult-level stuff in it, and I thought, this is interesting, because these kids aren't reading this. I seem to be the only one that's reading this. Right, right. And I had a thought that, wow, I wonder if they're trying to position this country to be the police force of the world. Yeah. I had that thought in the first grade. I called BS on the Kennedy assassination in the seventh grade and wrote a, wrote a paper on it. And it's turned out to be correct. Let me just toss one last thing at you about, about Kennedy, because we, we know that was an inside job. We know it was CIA and mafia. Right. I mean, it's the same thing as, how, look, how is the CIA going to move all that blow that they got from the Nicar Nicaraguans without help from the mob, local and higher up, that volume of coke? How are they going to do it? Answer, they can't. Hi, I'm from the CIA, and I've got a six by six full of cocaine for you. Are any of you brothers interested in it? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Okay, it's like it's time for everybody to wake up and grow up a little bit. It's like, look, if it looks like BS, <laughs> it probably is. That's not a brown snowman. Oh, man. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, no, no, let me backtrack now because I, I, I wasn't necessarily saying that uh, Mike Pence that I would suspect him as being a mass, a criminal mastermind sitting in a dungeon lair somewhere hatching a plan or something. Not, I'm just saying that would we be seeing more of him as if your starting pitcher had an injury and you had to go to your bullpen? You know that 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 is Trump dangerous enough to be taken out? You know that uh, certainly is to some people. Yeah, uh, at least they perceive he is. Now, in my experience, you can make people mad. Or you can scare them. But if you make them mad and scare them, they'll frenzy and they'll attack you. So, yes, I think Mr. Trump's life is in grave danger. I think, he's, I think he is quite aware of this. But Donald Trump knows the ins and outs of New York City. And I'm pretty sure, you know, these Italians particularly have very, very conservative values. I would think it would be an extremely bad idea to take a poke at Mr. Trump because you're like, liable to have some of the godfathers that nobody knows about that most assuredly still exist just come after you and you won't know who's coming after you. And you'll never see him coming and nobody will see him leave. Nobody. This is... They won't be hiring a Sirhan Sirhan. They won't be doing that. This is interesting. It, it's... it's... <sighs> if, if, you, know if... How, you know how the CIA started working with, uh, with the mobs? It became the CIA in 1947 or 8, right? Somewhere in there. Okay. Before that, it was the OSS. Wild Bill Donovan ran it. Well, Lucky Luciano was contacted after he was thrown out of the country, one of the biggest godfathers ever. And they said, Lucky, we've got a little problem. What's the matter? Well, we got this thing called a Gestapo. They're coming in. They're coming into the... Lucky, they're coming into the docks. We got Krauts coming in. They're Gestapo in their fifth column. They're, they're, they're espionage agents. We, we got trouble. So here's the thing. You, if you can get your boys to help us out with this, we'll let you back into the country. And Lucky said, let me think about it. Okay, I'll do it. That's how they, that's how they made friends. And that's why they still work together today. Now, the, the big families are, have been largely driven underground, but trust me, they still exist. You're not going to, you're, you're going to have to deal with those guys in New York City. You're going to buy a bunch of steel. You're going to buy a bunch of concrete. You're going to buy, you're going to get a bunch of union painters and woodwork. You're going to deal with what we would call the organization, whether you think you are or not. And if you've been a, a New Yorker your whole life, you know damn well you're dealing with the organization. All they want you to do is pay them. You, the problem arises is if you don't pay them. As long as you pay them, it's fine. But they are highly organized. 
and they don't take no for an answer. You take the money, you better pay it back. You don't pay it back, well, you sleep with the fishes. That's all. So, in a way, it's kind of a good thing because it keeps everybody real honest. Look, Brian, that's the human condition. You know, when people have to go and do number two in the morning, this is the great equalizer. You ask, why am I having to perform this function exactly? I mean, seriously, could the creator not have come up with something a little bit less dehumanizing than this act I have to do, you know, hitting the head and being in there a while? We are all human beings. We are all saints and sinners. We are all idiots and geniuses at moments. That's just the way it is. That's, that's the light and the dark side of, of human nature. You can't make human beings into robots unless you alter their brains. You bombard them with whatever you're working on, you know, whatever, MK Ultra. You do it with drugs. You do it with, with all kinds of waves and beams and everything else. They made that movie, Men Who Stare at Goats, to mock the fact that psychokinesis is possible. I've witnessed it myself. And I'm a Missouri-born Texan, man. I, you know, you're not going to pull some woo-woo stuff on me. I'm going to call you on it. Right. Uh, so that's it. I mean, even when Norbert Heuser made this, uh, he didn't make it. He's got a guy in, uh, I want to say, either Shanghai or Singapore. Might be Hong Kong. I don't remember. <laughs> Who, who's a super-duper engineer. And I met him personally. I can't remember which city he operates out of. But anyway, they made this little wand, and I bought one. And you look at it, and you go, this is a nice instrument. What is this, Norbert? It's a proton alignment tool. Oh, really? Can I turn myself invisible with it? No. No? Well, tell me what it does. All the protons in, in matter, they vibrate. He goes, but they vi they're not all vibrating together. They vibrate individually at different rates. He goes, what this tool does, it uses PICO technology. It's, I heard you call it a laser. It's not a laser. It's PICO technology. And it, it, quite, it settles those protons down, and they all vibrate at the same frequency and at the same time. I said, you can prove this. He said, oh, absolutely. I said, now, don't con me, Norbert. He looked, he's this German guy. He looked at me like, he looks like the hitman in the raincoat. If you've ever seen Steve McQueen in Bullet, the guy wearing the raincoat that had the Winchester pump shot <laughs> reminds <laughs> me of Norbert. It's funny, but he's the nicest guy in the world. A, a dubious character, guy. you would say. A dubious character. So, so here's the thing. I took this thing out, and I did about 50, probably more than that. It's probably closer to 100, because I've had the thing for about, well over about two years. And I'm telling you, you hit a glass of wine with this, Chardonnay, red. You hit iced tea with it. You hit milk with it. I don't care what you hit with it, but especially, especially wine. And you can tell the difference between the one that you flashed that, that, uh, that light into and the one that you did not. I have done dozens of blind taste tests, and I'm telling you, it's at 100%. No one has ever picked the wine that was not hit with this light as, as being the one that tasted better. It will even change the texture of a steak. You put that steak on your plate, hit it with this thing, and it just the meat just, just tears apart. You don't even need a knife. It's weird. So, uh -oh. okay, sorry about that. <laughs> We were having a nuclear drill. John blasted a submarine with the same device. He just blasted yeah. a submarine. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, Brian, <laughs> I'm just saying that just because somebody says that they have a device that will work does not mean that I believe this. I'll also tell you this. When um, um, these Austrian engineers, man and his son, came with Norbert just a couple of months ago, they had these little devices like you put this on your... Uh, Strap this around your positive lead on your battery and uh, put this on each bank of, this is V6, so it's like put one on, on one side, put one on the other side. Okay, fine. It'll improve your mileage of the trend. Well, he got, an, he got an endorsement from the Austrian government who saved something like, I don't know, 20% of their gas mileage just by strapping these little devices on. And I'm going, yeah, right. Well, here's the thing. They're just little rectangular plastic and metal deals. I don't really even know what's in them. They're sealed. You can't open them. So I put them on one bank of wires, put them on the other bank of wires. Actually, I did, and the engineer did. And he put one on the hot, uh, the hot side of the battery, the positive cable. Well, the transmission does shift differently. It does get about, so far about, he says, it'll take six months for this thing to, to fully realign everything. I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, 
gasoline mileage is up 10%, just no change in driving habits or anything else. And when I look over on the, on the little uh, truck's computer to see what the average gas mileage is, it's stuck on 15.0. It never varies. It stays right on that. And it's getting more than 15. So just strapping these things on those wires and on that battery cable changed the way the vehicle operated. So these woo-woo devices, I mean, some are like, oh, look, man, it'll, it'll, it'll do this, it'll do that. Well, some of it's just rubbish and it won't do anything, like some of that software we got in the 90s. wouldn't do anything that was supposed to. Um, but these devices work. So you have to look at, at what's real. I mean, I don't know how we got onto this, really. I, this, is like, this is like doing a net search. You start off with one story, you click a link, and by the time you <laughs> click six, I mean, you forgot where you started. Well, we were, talking but, about, um, we were talking about not being able to be fooled because we're actually testing things out ourselves. We're, we're, yeah, that's it. We're that, not going to be surprised right very easily. You know, we're not gonna, you're not going to pull one over on us. We're, we're street smart enough to smell bullshit if it's in the air. And, it, and if, if the story's checking out, you got to keep following it, and that, that story gains more credence over the years if you cannot disprove it. That doesn't mean we've necessarily locked into figuring out exactly what's behind JFK or 9-11 or the Gulf of Tonkin, or you know, go down the list of things that, that people will disparagingly say are conspiracies or conspiracy theories, but we know when we're being fed bullshit. And I think, essentially, John, that's what would happen with Hillary Clinton this, this time. She, the Clintons probably would have been an unstoppable force in the 1800s when they could control the print media. Absolutely, hands down. But in the internet age, you can't hide the fact that she's fainting. You can't. You well, cannot dance away and, and and describe away Benghazi as a an incident after some people watched a YouTube video. Like like, there, there's too many smoking guns. There's too much rubble in, that that she's left in her wake. And I'm just I'm just really happy the American people did not allow her to take the reins this time along because she's completely turned into a puppet controlled by the power elite, the Saudi princes that paid her $25 million and Trump shuts down in a tweet. I mean, it's it's pretty astonishing. And, and my, my question, John, if we were going 80 miles an hour down the freeway toward globalism, toward losing our sovereignty, toward losing our rights and our freedoms and, and the Bill of Rights as we know it today, if we were headed in that direction with George Bush, Barack Obama, trying to hand it over to Hillary Clinton, what has this election done to that trajectory at a smooth 80 miles per hour? Well, look, here's the thing. There was a, there was a massive, what they, you know, I, this is only theory. But it seems like they thought the public was sufficiently dumbed down to accept their nonsense. No one has shown WikiLeaks to have ever released any false information about anything. No one has ever said, well, this is just bogus. But notice right before the election, Clinton's uh, camp puts out the, uh, the word that, now be on the lookout for, for, for uh, fake WikiLeaks, okay? They're going to trump up some, they're going to they're spread disinformation. Yeah, right. Hillary and Bill Clinton, look, Bill Clinton claims to have had sex with over 2,000 women, okay? That's why he looks like a shriveled up you-know-what, okay? <laughs> he also looks like he's in pretty bad health. Yeah. She's a, she's a perv also by all accounts. None of her security details can stomach her. These people think that they're Teflon coated and bulletproof because they've, been, they've evaded justice for so long, it has become a drug. And I think even, I talked to a guy today, he drives a truck for Federal Express, don't even know him. I know his name now, but, but I, I've seen him, I don't know, for months. He just said he stayed out of the election. He said he didn't, he didn't care for either candidate, he just stayed out of it. He said, oh, he said if I have to spoon you know what from over here into a bowl I have to do that to support my family that's what I'll do well I didn't say you should have voted for Trump because the election's over there's no point in saying something like that but I understood what, what he was talking about these people are now these these riot types are now being put in the position of being representative of the entire Democrat Party and that's just not the case but it's in our heads these kids that did this are either idiots or they're criminal idiots. And that's the long and the short of it. But look, somebody, it didn't just, these events are organized. This is George Soros. 
he thinks he's going to have a repeat of the of the '60s with the you know the uprisings at um, at the various universities. Everybody raised in hell. You know, I guess he's hoping for another Kent State, where National Guard troops actually killed four kids up there. And they shouldn't have done it. Four dead in Ohio. Yep. Well, that really happened, man, and it was. Uh, that was my backyard. I, I mean, I was you know I was you know half hour hour away out, outside of there, but you know you grew up, you always knew that the people around there, everybody everybody remembered when it got that dicey, when we got that close, when things were getting that bad. Exactly. Yeah, but see, that was a legitimate grievance. There was an undeclared war that cost us, by the time it was all over, with 50,000 dead, and I don't know how many wounded. And a lot of these guys, and, and some women too, are still alive, and they're suffering for it. They suffer right. every day of their lives for being put into a situation. And, and who got us in there? John Kennedy didn't want us in Vietnam. But the military de and defense companies, the military and the defense companies wanted to go in there. John, so that's my did. point. That's my point about Trump. They they were going to go into Syria with John Kerry and Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Now he's standing in the way. Does he stand a chance? Is it just the mafia ties that you think are going to keep him bulletproof, literally, figuratively, and politically? I mean, I, I I'm not going to say. If I'm, anybody hurts him, there's going to be payback. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. I mean, look at that guy, Seth Rich. People think that he was the uh, he was the WikiLeaks uh, insider in there. Dead. Still got his money. Still got his keys. Still got his cell phone. He's dead. And Julian Assange came out and and basically said exactly what happened. He was the the, the DNC, uh, the person that leaked the stuff to WikiLeaks. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was what was it? A few weeks, a month before they left. I'm trying to remember exa the exact timeline. A month or two ago. Um, yeah, he was silenced. The, the, uh, it's almost no doubt in my mind that that's exactly what happened, and that's the extent that these people will go to keep their power. Killing people to get your way. Look, there are people that will kill you. You know this. You're in L.A. There are people out there that will kill you over a cigarette. Yeah, that's true. I tell people, if you go walking down Sunset and you've got a pack of cigarettes that can be seen through your shirt and somebody asks you for one, you better give it to him because if you don't, you'll be in a brawl with a grown man instantly. Certainly there's the potential for that. Yeah. So if somebody will kill you over a cigarette, what do you think they'll, how many people do you think they'll kill over five or $10 billion? A lot of them. That whole deal in New York City, that was, the reason that the Russians went into Afghanistan was what? Does anybody know? Oh, oh, class is in session. All right. Well, I mean. Now, I'm not trying to put you on here. I'm this, just saying I, I had to well, find the, out. Well, the story that I heard, it, it was basically, uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. It was the Mujahideen. It was Osama bin Laden. It was to weaken the Russians on that flank so that we could do things on the other flanks and keep them preoccupied. Am I close? Man, they went in there to destroy the heroin trade that was decimating Russia. And the CIA wasn't going to have any of that. That so they brutal. trained yeah. Osama bin Laden. Look, Osama bin Laden's dad was the biggest contractor in the Middle East, friends with the Bush family. You know, the same George H.W. Bush that was uh, standing next to Bill Clinton. If you look at that book uh, by Roger Stone, Jeb and the Bush Crime Family, you'll see George H.W. Bush and Bill Clinton standing next to each other. And they both have the same look on their face, and they're, they're looking in the same direction. And these look like two tough mugs that you would never want to mess with. So CIA goes in there. Oh, wow, where'd they get all that stuff? You saw Charlie Wilson's war, probably. Oh, we want to kill Russians. Oh, really? You want to kill Russians? Okay. And so they start sending them Stinger missiles and all this other stuff. And we don't seriously think that they used all of them, do we? And then what happens? Now they take down the towers, and they make... CIA throws people under the bus all the time because people inside, there are good people at CIA, very good people, decent people, real no kidding patriots. They don't know what's going on three cubicles down from them. They do their job. That organization is very tightly compartmentalized. You don't, you don't know what's going on on the floor below. You have no idea what they're doing. Everything CIA does is illegal. Nobody invites CIA into their country to run some spy ops, and they're not supposed to do it here. That's why FBI got so, so ticked off at them, because they're always having to go around and clean up their messes, most of which, the great, huge majority of which, we know nothing about. 
it's weird, man. It's a huge, huge apparatus. I'm surprised it runs as well as it does, considering the size. But, but that's what this is all about. So now, Bin Laden's the bad guy. Anybody mention a dialysis machine at the big raid? No. So you're going to tell me that in Pakistan, I mean, you've got this genius over here in Dallas, this sergeant, some, some special forces dude, who's just completely full of you-know-what, talking about Bin Laden is in China. Bin Laden's not in China. Bin Laden, I said it back then. Bin Laden's in Pakistan. Look around. There's, look, look at a map. He was killed at Tora Bora. No, he wasn't. He got the hell out of there. He was in Pakistan the whole time. The CIA knew it. So now, after being on the lam all these years, they find him. A doctor rats him out in Pakistan. And he's only living in the biggest house in the whole neighborhood, which is a compound. <laughs> but nobody knows he's there, right? The McMansion. You, 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 got, you got goats and tin cans uh, a few few doors down, and you got a McMansion right next to you. But nope, nothing to see here. Don't worry about that. I mean, how ridiculous is this, Come man? On. Uh, Come it, on. It's like what? First, it was two Black Hawk helicopters came in, and one of them screwed up, and so everybody got on the other one. What? And then it was three Black Hawks came in, and one of them screwed up, so the guys that were on that one got on the other two. Oh, okay. And then SEAL Team 6 gets shot down in a notorious little valley that they were flying through, and every one of them was lost. Not only that, but I talked to Charles Strange before. His, real, his, his actual pronunciation of his name should be Strang, but Americans would say Strange. It's not Strangeways Prison in England. It's Strangways. So anyway, I hope that's clear to everybody. Um, <laughs> and he said that his son came to him and said, you would just not believe what is going on in this country. And he didn't come back. And in examining the body, uh, there was something about the condition of his son that did not suggest anything other than when seven people got off the, that helicopter, that Chinook, seven other people who were not on the manifest got on. And I think what happened is somebody pulled their ripcord on their chest pack. That's what it sounds like. And he got no answers as to what happened, any more than anyone can explain why that man was relieved of command on a ship, on an aircraft carrier. I think this, I, I want to say he was an admiral. I don't remember at this moment. But a man was, was uh, commander of the battleship, an um, aircraft carrier, was going to scramble fighters to Benghazi. He could have got him there pretty quick. Right, right, right. They relieved him of command. Why would they do that? Why would they not even send a couple of hornets over to scare the hell out of everybody? Why did Al-Qaeda, over the video that that lying bitch talked about, that nauseating pig, I'm calling Hillary Clinton a pig on your program. In my opinion, she's a... a Rosie O'Donnell is like Tinkerbell compared to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is, is a, a feral swine and somehow wound up with tusks. This is a horrible person. And if anybody thinks that they didn't let Chris Stevens, Jesus Christ, sorry. And when I say that, what I mean is save us, please, from these lunatics who, who would rule us, you know, who don't like you, who don't like God who think they are gods. They let Stevens die. He suffered a miserable death. Two, two SEALs get whacked out. CIA contract. They're calling it, you know, our embassy. It wasn't our embassy. Oh, it was an annex. Wrong. It was a CIA safe house. How do they know Stevens was there? Why did they bring their little Al-Qaeda flag? Why no air support? Why nothing? They let those people go down. They wanted them to die because they knew damn well that those weapons were going to be part of the arsenal of what we now call ISIS. And every time I think about this, Brian, it makes me so mad I could, I could just spit fire. These people are criminals. General Ham and Admiral. But you see, they've dragged We're all in it now. Our leaders, we have allowed our leaders to drag our entire country into their jackpot. And when payback comes around, guess who's going to have to take the hit? We are. That's why I want Donald Trump right where he is in the president's office, if for no other reason than it makes a bunch of those rats nervous, and they'll expose themselves even more. 
Okay. Nailed it. Exactly. If we have to have somebody there, just keep them there and make them nervous. Were you referring to General Ham that was relieved of command? Uh, Ad- no, I think this guy was an admiral. Admiral Gawet. An admiral or, a, or a, a, a rear admiral. I think it was a rear admiral. I have admiral. He was in command of a carrier. I have Admiral Gawet. G A O U E T T E. I think that's a. I think. Well, you know, I, I heard. I, to just think about what Ambassador Stevens and the Navy, the other people that were killed that day. If, if they were able to look down and see what happened and see the Clinton crime syndicate destroyed, to see Valerie Jarrett's imprint on the Middle East destroyed, to see all of this stuff set back and, and with the reset button, um, you know, it, it, I, I watched 13 hours. I've, I've studied this for so long, this Benghazi stuff. It really upsets me. And this is the direction. they the, they really needed us to go to war in Syria. They've done everything they could, you know. And with with Vladimir they're Putin, they're insane, now, man. They're they're crazy as hell. They Obviously are. Obviously, they are. I mean, what kind of a person consigns other people to death and then sleeps well that night for years? Look in the wake that the that the Clintons have left behind them. Look at the bodies in that wake. I mean, how many, how many bodies do we need before we figure out these people are no good? But all you have to do is say, oh, yeah, all the Mexicans can come over. Hell, sub-Saharan Africans, too. Let the Indians in. Let the Chinese in. Let everybody in. Yeah. And because we helped them, they'll vote for us. I mean, they think they've got this all sorted out. And the American people said, you know what? Enough of this bloody nonsense. And they tried to steal that election, and they failed. And they tried to vilify Trump, and that failed. And Megyn Kelly, just for the record, in my opinion, she's nothing but a, the, she may be the, the Palomino pony, the friendly horse, but she's a Trojan horse. And what pops out of that Trojan horse is a closet liberal. She has been biased the entire time. Now it's gotten out that uh, Donald Trump uh, offered me a vacation if I, would, uh, if I would alter my reporting. What reporting would that be? You know, at the collection of candidate, potential candidates for, uh, for the, um, the presidential run, she comes right out of the chute to Donald Trump, starts talking about him calling Rosie O'Donnell a pig, which is true. She was a strident, horrible liberal. Nobody could stomach her. And uh, he, she got crossways with the wrong guy, and he told her what he thought. Was that gentlemanly? Who cares? Was it true? Yeah, or was but, it just ungentlemanly? Yeah, but John, here's the, here's the thing: the the control and the manipulation that they've used from time immemorial, that they've used, they used all the manipulative powers possible to lead that question with Megyn Kelly against Trump and what happened. It galvanized a watching audience to watch how he took a hit, he took a cheap shot, and he stood there and how he responded, and and the the country went, huh. This guy, he looks like a fighter. He can take a hit. Oh, and he's oh, yeah. and he swings back. Okay, maybe he swings back a little low blow sometimes. Maybe a little out of bounds. Uh, you know, maybe a couple cheap shots of his own. But hey, you know what? If you're getting cheap shotted, and this is a life and death thing, maybe maybe you have to do that from time to time. But the DNC and their dirty tricks and what they pulled at the at, at their convention in Philly, what they did the whole time with all the super delegates uh, getting Bernie out of there. I'll tell you what, Bernie had nothing but enthusiasm, Hillary had nothing but a name, and a bunch of people controlling her puppet strings. So maybe them them manipulating against Bernie, maybe that's the thing that cost him the White House, because Bernie had a groundswell of love. Hey, you know what? A, a, a very old, very socialist kind of guy that's accurately portrayed by uh, Larry David on Saturday Night Live, which was brilliant. But I'll tell you what, he had all the enthusiasm, and he might have actually had a chance to win this thing, and it was them rigging the system is what actually got them in the end. Hillary Clinton hiding the emails, all of those coming back to haunt her and bite her in the end, that's the thing that ultimately brought her down. And I just think the poetic justice here is something that it would be tough to write in a script and make it believable. Well, I think you're right, but as far as Bernie Sanders is concerned, it's just as well they got rid of him because apparently some of these retards out there don't understand that everywhere socialism has been tried outside of a small country with a high gross domestic product, socialism simply will not work. It doesn't work. 
but apparently there are some people out there that, you know, they just know that it'll work. They just, they're just sure that they're right and, um, and they're stupid. They're just plain stupid. You, look, people need to understand. Stupid people really do exist. You can stand there and you can as gentlemanly and as gently as you can, as, as is humanly possible, present evidence to counter their argument. They won't even see it. They will not consider it. Some people are just like that. Now, a lot of them can't really be blamed because no matter, but some of them can be. Some are simply the victim of a bad educational system uh, soundbite communications uh, that, that they try and call news. No, but no, but they don't inform anybody. Uh, before I get off of Megyn Kelly, though, I want to add this: the <laughs> night of the election, she said, "We don't know how he'll govern." She didn't say, "You know." The thing is, I wonder how he'll govern. You know, he seems like a. Maybe a little bit too straightforward sometimes. No, she's a closet liberal. They talk about Donald Trump said, you know, saying, "Hey, you know, you make a lot of dough." Well, there's a flip side, and you can grab the woman by the kitty or whatever. <laughs> yeah. There's two factors that are leaving out. Number one, a lot of women will present themselves. They want that kitty grabbed by a rich guy. Some of them absolutely will slide off their chairs around a powerful man. Okay, that's a fact because they think there's something in it for them. And number two, he was talking to the guys. I doubt very seriously if, number one, he was aware he was being report- recorded. And if he was, I'm pretty sure he wasn't considering running for president at the time. If everything that everybody has said, that's why it's so scary in the Bible. It's like you're going to stand before the Lord and you're going to account for every idle word you've ever spoken. Now, why do you think that's in a book that goes back that many thousands of years? Guard your tongue. It can cause problems if the wrong person hears it wagging. But it's okay for Megyn Kelly to go on Howard Stern show and talk about her sex life with her husband like anybody get, anybody cares. Well, some of them do care. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they're going to fantasize over that because they have no life themselves. The people who supported Donald Trump are people who, like the bikers, the truck drivers, you know, they just work their jobs, they got their problems, they handle them, they ask nobody for anything. If they have a tough year, they have a tough year. If they have a good year, they have a good year. They just want to live their lives in a somewhat controlled environment. They don't want their kids to be subjected to a criminal activity. They want to be decent people. And they're tired of indulging these idiots who, I repeat, somehow in their minds think because they need something that you owe them. You don't owe anybody anything. They talk about being equal. Well, we're not equal. Some people are smarter than others. Some can jump higher. Some can run faster. Some are better at uh, cricket. Some are better at uh, clogging. Some are better at guitar. Some people absolutely suck at guitar. So, no, we're not equal. So everybody can get, get rid of that notion because it's just plain bleep and stupid. You are equal in two places, at birth and at the foot of the cross before your creator. That's the only place you are equal. As far as planet Earth is concerned, you're on your own. You want to succeed? Do it. You, you develop your talent. You find your purpose. You do your work, and you do it better than anybody else, and you can succeed too. But don't expect me to drop my grade to a C because you're going to make an F, and I need to give over some of my points so you'll feel better about yourself. Are we clear here? (laughs) Crystal clear. That is what Obama has been shoveling. Everybody else is responsible for everybody else. Their successes are only at your loss. The people holding you down, it's it's the 1%. Yeah, you know what? The same people that are controlling the the, the politicians that Hillary, like I'm talking about with Hillary, the marionette puppet. Yes, in that way, the 1%, the people with most of the power, they do tend to control politicians to work for them instead of the people. Yes, I get that. And that's why you're not supposed to 
to allow anybody to ever have that much power over anyone because humans are humans and you don't want to allow the potential for that to expand into dominance, power, control, and a loss of your civil liberties, your humanity, and maybe even your soul. Um, you know, th this, this is next level thought here. The fact that that was stopped the fact that that has taken a different shift, perhaps, because I have my reservations about Donald Trump as well. I'm going to hold his feet to the fire uh, like the gentleman we, we talked to, Kenneth Lane in, in Cleveland, Ohio, when we went to cover that. He said, Mr. Trump, we will hold your feet to the fire. It's an awesome rant. you got to check it out. It's on the YouTube channel. But, um, you know, I'm going to hold his feet to the fire. You know, there is a concern that maybe he's a con man. I mean, Hillary's a neocon, and, and Donald Trump, you know, he's a Demo lifelong Democrat. But you know what? Anything to keep the Clintons out of the power and control from the position of power that they had almost taken reins of, almost had access to, anything to keep the Clintons away, I am, so, John, I'm beside myself, giddy, happy, ecstatic, that that has at least been paused. I mean, to put it into words, it really is difficult. It, it really is something that... I did expect to happen, but I also was safeguarding myself against what if what if it doesn't? What if it's stolen? What if people are that dumb? And it, it, it gives me a little bit of hope that, that we might be headed in the right direction. Um, do, do you think I mean, the battle's obviously not over, but what do you think, John? What do you think the Democrats do from here? What do you think? Who's left in their bullpen? What is their next move at this point? I'm really at a loss. They don't, they don't have one at this point. The best the only thing they've got is uh, enough time will go by maybe people will forget people tend to have real short memories and people in this country tend to be very forgiving but i'll, I'll tell you this the, the democratic party has reduced itself to a, the point of irrelevant irrelevance at this point but the other part is it can only go more radical because they're looking at potentially eight years with donald trump okay if we've got that let the planet's got that long and it very well may not so all they can do is try and get their way through violence now. George Soros may very well decide to begin this Black Lives Matter, this race thing. He's going to have to play the race card again. You know, he's going to have to because he doesn't have any other cards to play. So that's, that's what's going to have to happen now. And we know, you, you know five cops got shot to death here in Dallas because some stupid white dumbass was leading a bunch of other dumbasses uh, called Black Lives Matter, and a sniper showed up, killed five cops, and wounded a bunch of other ones. Nice, huh? Yeah. So people need to understand, <clears throat> the Democrats have allowed some real criminals to attempt to take over this country. They have supported a criminal regime, which is the Barack Obama regime. They are responsible. They elected him, and the, and the people on the right are responsible, too, for allowing him to be elected. Now, this may be all part of some globalist grand plan, but that doesn't mean that we have to put up with it. We don't have to put up with it. What these people on the left are doing is criminal behavior. What the people on the right want is the law to be followed. Big difference. If we were trying to impose some unjust law, um, That'd be one thing. We're not trying to shove some criminality down their throats. We're trying to make the criminality stop. We want these elite. And Donald Trump didn't say all Mexicans are rapists and murderers. He said they're coming across the border in droves. There are murderers and rapists in there. He didn't say, oh, all Mexicans are rapists. He didn't say that at all. He said it inelegantly. But wait a minute. Bill, but Bill Clinton's a damn rapist, too. How many lawsuits does it take before somebody figures, uh, this guy's got a problem. This guy's a sex addict. And worse than that, he's a sex addict with power. Yep. Juanita Broderick. Just look at that case. Why, look, follow the money. Why, money was actually paid out to settle bad stuff over there. And then the pedophile island and all of the s spirit cooking, John. I mean, this took a really bizarre turn with the Podesta emails. Like, this went I'm going to tell biblical. you something right now, Brian, because I, I know you I know you got to go pretty soon. But look, people don't want to hear this. But sooner or later, they're going to know. So I might as well tell them. And I'm not trying to pull you into my jackpot with this, but th this is my truth, and I'm sticking with it. We have to be music 
or anything else that you do can be a religion. But it's only righteous if it's good. We need to be righteous people. We need to say, you stole if somebody stole. We need to say, you cheated if somebody cheated. We don't need to empathize and understand and, and all of that. And yeah, it's okay. We don't need to not keep score at the little kid's t-ball game. We need to give people the opportunity to fail or succeed because we learn. I, look, I've been around a pretty long time, and I can tell you, you learn a hell of a lot more from your mistakes than you do from your successes. I hear you there. Successes just encourage you to take more risks. But if you become reckless, that means you've lost your judgment. And you can do that. A, human's being, a human being's life really does matter. They have a, gr a great capacity to either create or destroy. But this country has gotten too much into notice this is going away. Pornography is on the decline. Number two, professional sports is on the decline because it's stupid. And there's no reason for $30 million to be paid to some dumbass who can't do anything except chase a damn ball down the field. Okay, it's a pastime. It's not a religion. We're going to have to be a moral society. Take care of your old people. Don't cheat on your wife. Don't abandon your children. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Do not tolerate people who lie, steal, or cheat. Just don't tolerate them. You don't have to give them a safe, a safe space. You need to give them a swift kick in the ass and send them down the road and tell them, you know what? You are not the kind of person with the character that you have that I want to be associated with, so I'll see you. Mind your own business. Take care of yourself. Put your own oxygen mask on and then assist the child. Do good. Don't partake of the works of darkness. Instead, expose them. It says that right on the home page of caravantomidnight.com. And that's what we need to do. Do I think I'm on the clothesline running my mouth like this? I don't care. I really don't care. I've already had the Lotus and the Porsche and this and that. It's just a bunch of damn rubbish. It's just metal. It's just a box with four wheels on it. It doesn't make me a better person or a greater person. It attracts people who are attracted to that sort of thing. It means nothing. All of this stuff, the chair you're sitting in, that microphone, your computer, the furniture that, that I see around me, that TV over there, it's all made of the same stuff. And guess who it belongs to? Well, it's not us. We didn't create ourselves and then just show up. We were put here for a purpose. People need to look into themselves and find their purpose. You don't have to just grind your life out. You don't have to believe everything that you hear, nor everything that you see. You need to tap into the higher power because if you put your faith in human beings, you will be continually disappointed with rare exceptions, like a, a wife that you stay with for your whole life, like a child, like a son or a daughter, a mother or a father. You put your hope in people. You put your faith in your creator. You put faith in, in God Almighty. That's, that's who you owe your allegiance to, not some bitch like Hillary Clinton. Okay? And I'm, I'm sorry, I feel like I've really taken some major liberties on your program, but I feel very passionate about this. We're on a real short timeline. There is a lot of praying going on in this country. And it, in my opinion, it is, I'm, I'm not going to even dilute it. I'm going to say it is my considered belief that the Lord has decided to help us one more time and grant us a reprieve. And we better either straighten up or he won't do anything to us, but he'll remove his protection from us. And then people will know what hell on earth really is. It's happened before in other countries. Don't get the idea that we're just so special that it can't happen here. It can. And so, we've seen it. So don't let it happen. 
It's it's been popping Square up yourselves during. Out. Square yourselves yeah. away and unbleep yourselves right now, and decide you're going to live. I don't mean go around frowning all the time, but you're going to live a serious and sincere life, and you're going to do good works, and you're going to turn away from bad works. You're not going to drink blood and semen at the damn uh, spirit uh, cooking session. You're not going to watch pornography. All it's doing is destroying your sexuality. That's all it's doing. That's why young men today are, are, are if I can be frank, they're getting laid way less than they were uh, in, our, in our day, those, uh, you know, the oats sowing days, because they're into porn now, and it's destroying their sexuality. Everybody knows it. I just talked to a guy last night. He said his daughter, you want to hear something? Yeah. This man, uh, this man told me that, that he was just appalled because um, he asked his daughter, who, who was, um, and this is just a solid working guy, just a solid working guy. He's not some sort of a perv. He's, he loves his wife and he loves his two kids. His daughter came home and he asked, well, where's so-and-so? And she said, <clears throat> well, I won't be seeing him for a little bit because he told me that sometimes he has dick days. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means he's bisexual. And we can say it's it's a by uh, what is it by fee, by phenol or something bisphenol bisphenol that's a that has a gender bending component in it. Sure it does. Sure it does. Look at all the obesity, but we keep buying the food. You know, look what drugs do to people. Look what heroin. I, I was talking with, with a, a guy, and, and he says. Um, he said, crystal methamphetamine. I went, crystal methamphetamine? Are people still doing that? And I heard about that in the 80s. He goes, I don't like you wouldn't believe. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of an idiot would do that? You look over at a person who has done something, and you go, oh, my God, that person's messed up. He says, oh, no, man, it's, it's, <laughs> you can't believe the methamphetamine use. Well, and the heroin, too, since, since everything we got involved with overseas. The heroin epidemic is flooding this country right now. It's hit the streets. Well, speaking of heroin, you know, the Russians went in to destroy it because the Russian mob was running wild with heroin, hooking people all over the place. It was bad. It was going to destroy the culture. It really was. I mean, Vlad Putin even said the birth rate's going so low, we need to declare a national lovemaking day and get some children on the way. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, is notice that the reports that we've seen over the years about the record poppy harvests in Afghanistan. While our troops were there, of course. How about the stories about people, um, uh, about uh, soldiers guarding poppy fields? We've all we've all heard all of that. They're bringing heroin over from uh, from Vietnam. Also, that's where it really started. That's where the heroin trade really started. You know, and you'd have a. Uh, they just say you either go along with it, or somebody's liable to find an M60 lower in your sea bag. Understand? They're bringing dope back in the in the in the coffins with the uh, fallen soldiers, stuff like that. Look, this is how it is. The devil, what we call the devil or Satan, runs this planet. And this is stated in Scripture, and it is true. Only through faith and belief in Christ can you keep it away from you. That's the only chance you have. Got a real short timeline here. 50, 60 years goes by like a blink. And one day, you're going to say one of two things when you check out. You're either going to say, I love you, or you're going to say, I'm sorry. How many times have those two words, I'm sorry, been, been the last words that somebody spoke, and then they checked out? Don't be that person. Live your life now, tomorrow never comes because by the time you reach it, it's called today. And with that, I will thank you very much and wish you absolutely blessings John. and um, stay safe out there because it's liable to get weird. I'm, I'm thinking that it might not, but I'm also thinking in equal measure, yeah, it might. Yeah. So let's just see. Let's see what these rats do next. And let's be ready to pounce on them like jungle cats if they do.
Absolutely. John, tell everybody about your shows once again, about Caravan to Midnight, about Arc Midnight, about the website, about the club, signing up with you, all of that stuff, because I know you're, you're doing consistent work, you're doing great work, you're getting interesting guests, having very interesting conversations, and you know, my, my, my final thought on all of this is I wrap it up, and then I'll hand you the floor to tell us where to stay connected with you, but you know, it, it just really comes back to whatever analogy you want to use. He's the captain of the ship. He's the pilot of the plane, and we're all on it. Um, I'm, I'm going to say prayers for health and safety and for guidance and temperament and wisdom, and, you know, let, let, let's give it a chance and, and see if we can improve the quality of our lives. That's, that's my hope for this administration. That's my hope for the people that are upset by it. Trust me, the people on the other side like me, have been very upset with the direction we've been headed for the past eight years. But maybe there's another way forward where that we can all succeed. Um, is, I think there's another way forward that we can succeed with. And it's going to take a little bit of a different vision, but hey, that's why we have elections, and that's why we have the chance to try something new. We'll try it out and you see know, if we like it. one of the old Greek philosophers, I want to say it was Aristotle, I might be wrong, but one of them said, the petty thief they put in prison, but the spectacular thief they elect him to public office. This has been going on for a long, long time. Yep. So we study this. And, uh, in fact, we, we got, a, uh, got a message from a woman who said, I talked to my husband. Based on what I've heard on Caravan to Midnight, I've been, been with you for the, for, since almost the beginning, I was able to talk to him. And we differ on the Republican thing. We do. He goes, but he voted for Trump because I told him this is not about us alone. This is about our children and our grandchildren. And he pulled the handle for Trump. You know, when you've got Larry Nichols on here and Stone, I mean, Roger Stone, he's, he's a wacky guy. I like him. But um, have all these people come on who, who know they're way deep inside the, uh, the Clinton apparatus and other things. Uh, it enables people to make decisions. We have a, a long format conversation like you and I have had tonight. And we bring on the most interesting people that we can. And it's not all gloom and doom. It's, it's light and enlightenment. And uh, I danced an Irish jig for about 10 seconds yesterday, or at least my version of one. So we have fun on the program. It's not a gloom and doom program. It's a, you know, arm yourself with information so you can make a better decision. There are over 600 programs in archive at $60 a year, at less than a dime a show, less than 10 cents. So in uh, 19, in 2000 money, that's about six and a half cents a program. <laughs> okay. I, 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 sm I smell the new liner. I smell the new advertising for your program. I can, uh, adjusted for inflation, I can see it now. Yeah, right. and, and you know, the thing about it is, is, is we, uh, we had a promotion running for a while. We'll still do it. Anybody who joins us for a year, we'll send you a free copy of Trevor Loudon's movie, The Enemies Within, which reveals every communist connection inside the Congress right now on both sides of the aisle. It connects the dots like, a, like no film I've ever seen. And the guy's a New Zealander, and he said the reason he did it is because he loves America, because America saved New Zealand from the Japanese in World War II. Wow. And he started looking into things going, oh my gosh. So... This is not clever editing. These people are on the record. He, he names the names. He connects them to the organizations. And uh, when you see it, you will be, it, it, it's a very sobering experience. So join us for 60 if you can. makes a great, great gift. You can give away a subscription and give away the movie if you want to or keep the movie if you've already got a subscription, whatever. But we treat you like family because you are a family member. We have great technical support people. They, if you have any kind of a glitch, they get it taken care of straight away. And we have great customer support because we, again, we treat people like family. Because when you support us, we support you. And I invite you to take a look, caravanofmidnight.com. Just the, the words, no, no numbers, no missing letters in midnight, just the words. Come on, you'll like it. And the Arc Midnight is on uh, tomorrow night from 10 to midnight central. And it's just so we can reach more people and invite them to join. Absolutely. We've also got a YouTube channel. Check it out. You'll have fun. Yeah, and do you you also join social media, right? You you got some accounts floating around there too. Where is a good one? We do, we do Facebook. Yeah, we do. I, I withdrew from Facebook for a while because I was mad at Zuckerberg. But when his account got hacked, I went okay. <laughs> 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 well, what goes around comes around. So I decided what we were doing by withdrawing from Facebook was self censorship. Because if you know that they're watching your posts, 
well, you you won't express yourself. You right. won't be honest. You'll 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 hide. Well, you'll John, cover. John, that's what they said about the Trump voter because they've been called racist, bigots, homophobes, uh, uh, is like you know every every. A uh, disparaging comment you could imagine was hurled at someone who said they were thinking about voting Trump. So that silent American, that 5% of people, really messed up all of their data, all of their polling, all of their projections of what they thought was going to happen because the silent person that's been self-censoring themselves finally came out and said, you know what, Michael Moore even came out and said, I understand the Trump voter and I know he's going to win. Back when that was a, a ridiculous thing to say out loud. So, you know, self-censorship is dangerous, like you said. If, if you got one life, you might as well make it worth something and go out there and actually live it. So, no, I, I once again encourage people to check out your website, caravandomidnight.com, and then uh, Arc Midnight, you're on K, is, that's K-L-I-F.com, and people can stream it on the, on the web, correct? Yes, yes, absolutely, positively. Just, uh, just caravandomidnight.com, there's a button down there, go check out some stuff on, on our YouTube channel. And, and hook up with us. I'm telling you, we have fantastic, fabulous guests. They bring a lot to the party, and I do my best to uh, to uh, supplement that. So there you go. Very good. John, thank you so much for your time. I think it is a brighter day in America. I think all of the chicken littles thinking the sky is falling. I don't really see it that way. I think that this is actually a very, very, very good thing that Hillary Clinton was blocked, and her crime syndicate did not uh, continue to keep their reins on the power that they had gathered over the past several decades. Who knows? Maybe she'll even be done running for president. I don't know. It, it's like one of those uh, one of those horror movies. You, you, you kill the bad guy and they come back from the grave. And you can never count them out with the Clintons, but we shall see. John, thank you so much for your time. You have a great weekend. We'll be sure to talk again soon, and I appreciate it as always, okay? Goes both ways, Brian. Thank you very much. God bless, son. Same to you. Thanks, John. All right, so for everybody out there in the TNAM radio network, I just want to say thanks for sticking around. We've had technical glitch after technical glitch. I won't bore you with the details, but hey, stay connected with us. We're about ready to ramp this up big time. Big League! We're going to ramp it up Big League. Was Trump saying Big League or Big League? Anyway, my name is Brian Engelman. This is The New American Media. Go to YouTube.com slash The New American Media. Click subscribe. Go on Twitter. We're at American underscore media underscore. Follow us on Facebook. Man, we're doing great stuff over there. And same with um, Instagram as well. Just search for The New American Media. I just want to say special thanks to John and everybody else. I appreciate you. I love you. We'll talk again soon. Peace.